Right guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Tony and this is the Mighty Jimny where I'll be taking you on my West Australian camping and outdoor adventures and all things the JB74 Suzuki Jimny. Now, uh, I'm back down at um, Racing Dynamics with uh, my good mate Phil here. So hello to the camera, Phil. How are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, and today uh, we've finished off the GME install for the, um, the CB unit that I've installed into the Jimny and we've moved on to getting the uh, working lights done on the uh, little spotlight install on the roof racks. So what I'm going to do is we're going to set that up on the roof and then we're going to go through how to do the wiring loom to come back down through the windscreen that way and, uh, and wire in and this will actually uh, wire into my existing spotlight uh, setup that I've already got so it will all come on with my spotties. Uh, so go get yourself a cold beer and we'll do all the hard work. Work. Enjoy, sit back and relax. Cheers. Okay, guys, so I'm just uh, fixing the last of the four spotlights to the top of the roof rack here. So as you can see, um, I've got the four spaced out relatively evenly. Now what I'm going to do in the future is I'm actually going to probably replace these with uh, a, probably a slightly higher, um, higher lumen output uh, light, something along the lines of uh, maybe the Steady Type X series or something along those lines. Um, so if you've got any suggestions for some decent roof bar um, spotlights, then uh, let me know in the comments below. So what I'm going to be doing is um, I've already spaced this out pr uh, previously and each one uh, is it's, it's about 300, 350 spacing across. Okay, um, and these are pretty good. They've just got a, um, a couple of retaining screws that are there. So uh, once I've uh, actually got the power run to these, what we'll do is make sure that they're all lined up properly, okay? So uh, these are they're relatively tight, but they're going to be able to be moved, and then we'll give them that final nip up. And once we've done that, um, these shall all be uh, set up quite well. Now these uh, lights are actually, uh, they're quite good. Uh, they're a six LED light. Um, you can get them on, I'm pretty sure I've got these on Amazon. Um, and they're not a bad piece of kit. Um, but like I said, uh, for now, they're a little bit of a placeholder. The amount of uh, light that these guys are going to be putting out compared to something bigger that I'd like to go into the future um, is probably not quite that much, but something bigger is definitely going to suit my needs later on. But the main thing about this build here today is to get that cabling done and get that, uh, that wiring loom set up. And each of these, uh, these lights, we're going to um, install a little Deutsch plug on the back there. So once it's all done, it's essentially going to be a little plug and play job. So Bob's your auntie, Femme's your auntie. Alright guys, so now that we've got the uh, actual spotlights set up on the top of the, re uh, the roof rack here, we're going to terminate all the uh, wiring at the back. So we're just going to put Deutsch plugs on the back of each of these, so that way that we can um, uh, just clip them in and out, a bit of a plug and play kind of system, and uh, it's all nice and secure. Uh, we're also going to just do a drill a couple of little holes in the back part of this uh, railing. So I use the front runner roof rack, and just putting a couple of little holes in here that's going to enable us to have some... Uh, uh, little retaining clips that we can use with the cable ties and whatnot and that's going to keep any of the wiring really nice and snug up behind the back here so that's going to be really good there um, once we're done with that we'll lift all uh, this back up onto the roof and we're going to plan out our little cable run and that's just going to come back around the side here and then further down and where it comes down will just come down into the back of the car so we'll uh, we'll show you all of that um, and then once we're done, the cable should run down through this side of the windscreen there and then down into the, the actual engine bay. All right, so stay tuned um, and we'll finish off this build. All right, guys, so we're just here um, pinning out the back of the, uh, the LED lights here. Look, 
a lot of different manufacturers sometimes already have them pinned out with either Deutsch or uh, their own style of connector. Um, these ones just give wire tails, which is perfectly fine. We've got enough um, components here to do the job. So you can see here, I'm just putting the male uh, Deutsch pins on the back um, with the tool here. Just doing this one, crimping it on. Nice tight connection. Perfect. And these are the same style plugs and pins that we use on any motorsport vehicle. Um, the great thing is with the Deutsch plugs is they're, they're waterproof um, and dustproof and um, yeah, perfect little uh, connector for the job that we're doing. Cool, uh, we'll just repeat this process on the next three lights, um, fit the actual connector and then we'll move on with the rest All of the job. Alright guys, we're just going to fit the, uh, this is uh, the female Deutsch, obviously with male pins. Um, so basically we feed the two male pins through the uh, silicon uh, dust and, and weather um, seal on the back and then we pull them through and they lock into place in the front and then we put the safety lock on. So basically feeding the two pins through, it's nice and gently, you don't have to lean on it too much, you don't want to kink the pliers over or anything. There they go, nice little clicks into place, we use the nice little retaining pin that stops them coming loose. Uh, whilst in place, just pop that down, a little set of plies there. And then I've already pre-cut and fitted the uh, heat shrink to the back um, and put them on the wiring so you don't forget. Last thing you want to do is put the plug on and then forget to put the heat shrink over. And this is just a secondary um, bit of protection for just the two sets of exposed wires. Obviously, the um, we've put the pins onto them um, and they are just exposed out of the, the main sort of wiring section there. So I fold the uh, heat shrink over, get my trusty uh, butane torch here and we just uh, heat the heat shrink and have it shrink down and generally I do like one side then the other trying to get it all to shrink down nicely at, at the same rate. Um, this particular um, heat shrinking has an internal glue as well, so it'll actually um, bond to the wiring. It is a bit messy if we need to cut it back and, um, and obviously repair anything if that is required, but it also helps with sealing for the dust and the water out of it. So once that's done, nice, neat, sealed, ready to rock and roll. Alright guys, so um, we finished obviously the uh, terminating the plugs uh, onto the wiring for the LED lights. Um, now we're just securing them in place on the back of the roof rack. Last thing we want is the plastic Deutsch plugs rattling around on the top of the uh, aluminium here. Um, and obviously we want to make sure the wiring is secure, um, especially when uh, you know, going full driving or, uh, or on the dunes or wherever you might be, we want to make sure that harness is nice and secure. So we've already done one already um, using a nice little um, a zip tie retainer. Um, they are removable as well so they're not, not fixed permanently and they're going to be nice and light, um, UV resistant um, and they're going to be able to hold on to that harness um, without anything else. So just going to drill into the existing um, roof rack here at the moment. So I've already made my markings. Uh, just drilling a small pilot hole to start with. Obviously just uh, be careful. When you're using any power tools, obviously the last thing you want to do is take any fingers off and put holes in your hands and um, whatnot else. And we'll just take it out to the correct size. Perfect. Now we are using these lovely little uh, saddles here, uh, little alligator uh, Christmas tree style ones so they push in and pull out. Easily replaceable if you do break one, um, but uh, plenty of securing power there for this harness. Get rid of that swarf, pop this one in, making sure that's all in nice and tidy. That's perfectly in place. Zip tie here around the plug. Make sure it's got a nice good grip there, nice and tight. Always get a good set of uh, flush cuts as well for your zip ties. Last thing you need is the little uh, angled ends on the end, cutting your hands up if you ever get in there, and perfect. We have it uh, nice and secure, a um, little bit of wiggle room so it's not, um, not permanently fixed, uh, but plenty enough to hold the wiring harness above the car. Alright guys, so we've got the rack uh, back on the roof here. Um, we've taken out the, the secondary um, support rail that was in there and replaced the corner units. Um, 
lights have been mounted uh, that Tony mounted earlier and obviously uh, back in place so we can start making this bespoke wiring harness. So as you can already see I've already started making the individual uh, wire tails off each of the individual lights. They will all come together in a junction point somewhere around here and then um, I'll terminate them and we'll run the harness back down into the car. Just made the third one here so just connecting it in place short term just getting the idea of how the, the wiring routes will come um, and the tails will trim them up and terminate them afterwards but um, starting to come together really well. Alright guys we finished the uh, routing of the wiring harness um, on top of the roof rack here um, secured it in place with uh, some heat shrink um, worked a little bit better than the um, than the zip die sort of idea we decided not to go down like the convoluted tubing you see a lot of guys uh, electricians use it to put the wiring together um, it's just going to look a bit average. It's not super UV resistant. Um, so going this way, I think it's going to be a nice, neat job. It's still going to be full wear of the proof, full UV proof, and um, looking great. So we've terminated it all just up here. Um, Tony will get some good shots of that shortly. And um, I'm just starting to make the secondary part of the harness, which will run back down the gutter guard, down the front of the window, and into the engine bay, where we'll do the relay installation. All right, guys. Finished all the wiring up here now, bit of a mission, but we got it sorted out. Um, the joys of having a uh, custom harness. So as you can see, uh, the Deutsch plugs are all connected, all zip tied back in. Um, the wiring routes I've joined together in, in obviously single, then a pair, then a triple, um, around the top there with the fourth. Joined them all in here and heat, uh, heat um, sleeve them all, so it's all connected and joined. And then the harness is running back down there. Obviously I'll come back up and just tidy, make sure the, the wiring routes um, sit nice and flat and nicely there, but that's all nice and tidy. Great thing is, clip a couple of zip ties and a couple of plugs, this whole loom will come out now in one piece, um, which is great for ease of management if we need to make a repair or whatnot else. Um, and worst case scenario, if you have to take it off, it's easily removable from the vehicle. Um, great thing is with the Deutsch plugs, as we discussed earlier, was we can swap these lights out as long as they've got a Deutsch uh, mail connector on the other end, which we can easily fit. You could put whatever style of light bar you wanted up here. So looking pretty good. Um, we'll do the job and uh, last the test of time. All right, guys, we're just running the harness back now uh, down the windshield and into the engine bay. Um, so we've routed it around the back of the uh, of the uh, rack here, um, down down the mounting foot. Obviously, we'll secure that nicely. It runs down the gutter and then around this section. And this particular wiring that I've got, this twin core, fits perfectly in between uh, the glass and the A-pillar there. Um, we will secure that probably with some just small amount of adhe uh, adhesive. Um, not too much, just enough to hold it in there, but obviously not to make it a, a pain when removing. Runs down through this, underneath this little panel here, and we'll secure the wiring just in the engine bay. Now, we've also got ourselves a little Nava 30 amp relay with a 30 amp inbuilt fuse. Um, more than enough for these particular lights um, and any upgrades that we do. I think we've worked out it's about seven and a half amp draw on the new satellites that will come later. So 30 amps is going to cover that um, without a problem. Um, worst case scenario, we can always update to a 40 amp relay and fuse assembly if required, but the LEDs don't draw too much. We'll get that mounted on in here. Um, we will um, utilize the trigger for this relay from uh, the previous installation um, of the front uh, driving lights there. So literally it's just a case of wiring it up and we're sorted. It's all there, ready to go in the engine bay. Um, but first things first, we need to mount the relay uh, for the lights assembly. So um, I'm not a huge fan of tech screwing uh, relays and bits and pieces in a the car. Um, there's better ways of going about it. Um, what we have here is a little M6, what we call a riv nut, and it's basically uh, a threaded insert, um, and you put it in just like a pot rivet. Um, there's a nice little hole here, come have a look here, Tony, um, of uh, just here in the engine bay, just on the side here. So this little bad boy is gonna drop in there. You uh, squish it up like a rivet, and um, then it gives you a threaded insert. So I'll just get this one on here, give that a bit of a squeeze. And there we have it, nice little M6 threaded insert. Now we can make a little bracket or bolt the uh, relay directly to it. And um, 
yeah, so much better than a nice little hole uh, from a tech screw. So we'll get cracking and get that relay in. Just whipped up a quick little lazy aluminium bracket here uh, to mount the relay that we uh, that I showed you guys beforehand. Just going to install this now. Just make sure everything fits as I require it to. So I've got a little bit further off the off the chassis there just so we've got some room to bring some wiring down and underneath. But look, that's in place, nicely mounted, not going anywhere. We'll uh, finish up this wiring and uh, we'll test these lights out. So where are we at, mate? Right, just finishing up the wiring for the relay. Uh, we did test all the lights before I started wiring everything up and come up tickety-boo. Um, so literally just getting uh, the power um, for the main relay, uh, the actual wiring harness to the relay, and then I'll just uh, rewire from the previous uh, fog uh, sorry, um, front lights, um, the high beams there. Uh, we're gonna use the trigger wire from that relay that's already here. So this one here, and uh, basically just wire that rear cross over onto uh, the new relay. So that way when you pull the, uh, the high beams on the stalk, all six will come on at once. Um, yeah, once that's done, we're pretty much um, sorted, do the last testing and uh, good for the review. Day. We've got the GME XRS 330 UHF that's been installed and we've also installed the Nylite uh, spotlights, the four of them up the top there. So absolutely fantastic. So first and foremost, Phil, thanks very much mate. You've done an absolute bang up job. My pleasure. All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is a bit of a reveal on the, uh, the old spotlights. They look absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, so once again, I hope this has helped any of those Jimny owners out there for throwing in your different uh, upgrades and mods to your uh, various vehicles that you've got. And uh, in particular, when installing a UHF to the new JB74 and also putting those spotlights on the new JB74 as well. But like always, remember, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell and all of my new content will be coming up very soon. I've got lots of uh, different content coming up in the second half of this year. And and also a couple of group camping trips and a couple of four by four days. Um, also, if you are a West Australian local with a JB74 and you want to be featured on my channel, please hit me up on Instagram at the Mighty Jimny or through the, uh, the comments below and we'll be in touch and I'll uh, meet up with you one day and do a walk around with your rig. So once again, like, subscribe, take care, drive safe and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.